Hey guys, welcome to The Devil's Advocates, where we tell you what we thought of movies so far this year. Hey everybody, last week we did our best films of the year so far list, so this week we're coming back to give you guys the worst films of the year so far list. A lot of stinkers so far, it's already halfway to the end of the year, so we might as well keep tabs on what was the worst of the cinema. At number 10 we have Truth or Dare. It seems like every year there's just some horror films that are just flung out to the audience. And it's not just they don't have the craft to create solid horror thrills, it's really a larger problem of condescension. Where's the logical considerations of this truth or dare premise actually being fleshed out in a way that makes any sense for an audience? It's impossible to care about the characters, to go on any sort of journey, to understand what the story might be, when the filmmakers have such contempt for the idea that they've even created. Blumhouse has done some great stuff, but this is not one of those movies, and I would say skip it. I dare you to skip this movie. Number nine was a bootleg I got from the Chinese lady at the barbershop of Avengers Infinity Wars. It was all in some weird Slavic dialect and the bootleg was shaky as hell. Could not understand a thing Thor said in his like weird Russian-ness. It was all dubbed. Groot's supposed to say I am Groot, but instead he says some weird Russian shit. Halfway through the movie, it just completely cut off. I thought it was supposed to be two and a half hours, and this thing ran at like 45 minutes at most. The CGI was awful, very difficult to follow the story, and all these snapping memes I keep seeing online, I don't understand at all, because all I got to see was some Vladimir Putin propaganda bullshit. At number eight worst film of the year, we have Movie Pass. MoviePass rolls out the surge pricing plan, and I'm getting pretty excited because this gives me the opportunity to give Mitch Lowe like five or six extra dollars so I can see Tom Cruise run around in Mission Impossible 6. But then the app is crashing, doesn't even work. I would have given like 10 times that in addition to my monthly fee just for the opportunity to pay even more money to see Tom Cruise's face 25, 50 feet tall on an IMAX screen. But no, Mitch, you just took that away from me. Number seven worst movie of the year was the firing of James Gunn off of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I cannot believe it took Disney two whole shitty Guardians movies to realize that this guy should be kicked off the franchise. Man, Guardians 1 and 2, just awful plot development, stale, stupid, cynical, in-your-face jokes, awful celebrity cameos. Who gives a shit about the Nova Corps and, like, is John C. Riley supposed to make you laugh? You're supposed to care about him? It's all just yuck. Bad Star Wars and Indiana Jones ripoff bullshit. In all seriousness though, Evan and I aren't huge fans of those movies in actuality, but him getting fired was completely unjustified and sets a horrific precedent that Disney absolutely should not have done. Completely undeserved. The number six worst movie of the year so far is Overlord. I unexpectedly saw this movie before seeing Mission Impossible. It was a real surprise, and honestly, I can see why Paramount just kind of threw it out into theaters because it does not compute. At least, say, The Cloverfield Paradox was two hours, so you got your money's worth for that movie. And it happened to be amazing, filled with engaging sci-fi ideas, character beats, the kind of stuff you want. This weird two-minute experimental film just wasn't doing it for me. Number five worst movies of the year is a tie between the last five minutes of I Feel Pretty with Amy Schumer and the last five minutes of Blockers with Leslie Mann. So both these movies use the same end credit song. It's like this poppy, whatever, we'll just play it for you. Baby, how you feeling? Anyway, it sums up the themes of both movies like equally pretty well. More so I Feel Pretty, but the jokes in I Feel Pretty aren't as funny as Blockers, so they sort of even out. But either way, using the same end credit song as another movie is pretty much stealing the entire other movie's identity. So I don't know who came up with it first. I know I feel pretty came out second, but you know these movies, you know, they finish up in post-production way before they're released. So I would say it's an even split and who I want to judge more. I hate both of them because of it. The number four worst movie of the year is Eighth Grade. So here's the issue with Eighth Grade. I walk in there and the protagonist is not Ryan Gosling. And this person is not a Blade Runner. Jared Leto is not in it with blind eyes. There's no synth score. Roger Deakins didn't even shoot it. It wasn't directed by Denis Villeneuve. How the f*** am I supposed to relate to the themes here? Why even call it 8th grade? The number three worst movie of the year so far for me was unfortunately Show Dogs. The censored version of Show Dogs where they removed the extended sequence of the dog the out of their owners in a weird reversal clicking play game. I thought this was going to be a spiritual sequel to Show Dogs My and had them lick peanut butter off of it. But sadly, it's not that at all. It's a true tragedy that the filmmakers lost the battle with the studio and were forced to cut out the scenes that depicted a really harsh, truthful, stark reality to bestiality issues and the effects they have on canine police officer relationships. A few lucky filmgoers got the privilege of seeing the uncompromised, uncensored vision over at Sundance at the beginning of the year, but the rest of us got to see the stupid censored hack job. The number three worst movie of the year 
is the Trump administration's recent border security and immigration initiatives. These have been destroying people's lives, throwing children in cages, separating families, creating the kind of trauma that could destroy a person for their entire life. This is not something we're proud of in this country. Number two worst movie of the year is us adding overt references to a real tragic event that's currently going on in the United States of America in the middle of this silly joke video that we're doing. On the one hand, it makes it seem like we're making light of what is absolutely not a situation that we find funny at all. And on the other hand, if you got that we're not being funny, why the f*** would it go in the middle of this video where all their silly shit is going on around it? It's probably just because it's on our minds right now and it's unfortunate that comedy can't save us from the fact that we both feel pretty complicit as U.S. citizens of these atrocious human rights violations that are occurring in our own country. But the number one worst movie of the year is Mission Impossible Fallout's egregious continuity errors. Take a look at this clip from the widely seen bathroom fight from the new Mission Impossible film. Note that while Henry Cavill reloads his arms, he grows an entire beard and breast pocket. <laughs> what are the filmmakers trying to do with this? Are they trying to troll us? They're taking our attention away from the story onto strange special effects going behind the scenes here. I heard that the stunts were good in this movie, but why use them to create continuity errors on screen? Anyway, those are the stinkers we saw at the cinema this year that we did not like. Stay tuned to this channel at the end of the year. We tell you what our ultimate worst of the year and best of the year lists are once we've got a chance to see everything released. Because as you know, we only had half a year, so these are only half the movies. Am I right, Evan? You are right. Comment below if you'd like to see a list of the best and worst Creed songs of the new millennium. Mm -hmm.